to introduce this um, object here and the makers of this object, um, Ivan Puig and Andres Padilla Domene from Mexico. So I just want to um, reflect a little bit on what's gone before and think about fluidity and transmission. Before the internet, we had canals. That's a kind of simplistic statement. But, um, <laughs> and somewhere between the canals and the internet, we had railway trains and then, then highways. But let's forget about highways for the moment. However, this object does go on train lines and highways. And it's a particularly interesting object because they're going to tell us a little bit about how this object was, was um, conceived. But I'd like to suggest that this object is a transmitter of non-electronic communication in a funny way. It's a, it's a transmitter of stories. And I, I've been in places when this object has arrived. And within seconds of this object arriving in a place, whether it's a, a gas station in the middle of New Mexico or Finsbury Park, where it is at the moment, as soon as, it, as soon as it arrives, there are ordinary members of the public, people who come up and say, uh, what, what's that? What's, what, what's, what's that thing? What's that thing? And then there, there's a story that begins. There's a long story which these two guys have from when they travelled around on this vehicle on the abandoned, ruined infrastructure following neoliberalism, neoliberal, neoliberal experimentation on their country, Mexico, in when, and I don't want to spoil their story, but when um, the railway system was privatised and the passenger trains immediately, almost immediately stopped functioning. So this object, this thing, this transmitter of stories is a transmitter of world stories, how um, of economic flows, of flows of people. Um, I first met these guys when they came across the um, very militarized Mexican border on this vehicle after their explorations to enter the United States. And already it, it was an object that was gaining obviously the interest of, of border control. But also is this um, kind of back to the future type vehicle as well. So many different stories and narratives. Um, I could go on all evening about the set, but I'm going to hand it over to the creators to show a little movie and tell us how and why they created this vehicle. Ivan? Yeah, hello. Um, we rather to call this uh, um, a tool, a research tool, rather than an object. Um, and we prepare a small video since we have been working on this project for several years and, and it is so big and, and it has so many branches that um, we try to condense all this in, in a small three minute video. So um, we're going to start with that and then we can talk a little bit more back and forward. In 1995, Mexico's National Rail Network was privatized. With it brought the cancellation of the passenger service, because they said it wasn't profitable. Almost 9,000 kilometers of railway lines were left idle, and many communities became isolated. We decided to research into what was happening on the abandoned railways. Where would all these tracks lead? We needed a vehicle that would transport us with all our questions along the railway lines. We designed a spacecraft, a research tool that will take us on an expedition into the inner space of the country. Its design revisits the idea of the future as it was seen in the past and paraphrases space exploration. The manned railway exploration probe has an aluminum fuselage and is equipped with space-time location technology that fuses both analog and digital. For a year, my brother and I explored the abandoned train lines throughout Mexico aboard the Ceft-1. We ate and we slept there becoming ferronautas, or rail knots. We retraced the routes that the train used to pass while it spread the promise of the future. 
SEFT-1 is equipped with a high rail system that allows it to travel along the rail tracks. On many occasions, we found no rails or sleepers, as these areas have been ambitiously looted. Nevertheless, the craft can also travel on land. While exploring, we took photographs, video and audio recordings and keep reading documentation of our encounters. We collected testimonials from people who still inhabit these areas, recording their stories and complaints. We compiled what we call lunar samples, which are archaeological post-catastrophe fragments. Every day, we would broadcast some of this material on the project's website. The website is a documentary archive of the project, where it is possible to examine the routes traveled and view the courses outlined on maps, see photos and videos, as well as read critical mossings and anecdotes. Historical data provided by a research team is also available. In some of the communities visited, we share the encounters we had experienced in other places. In this way, the probe functioned as a kind of transporter of stories and questions. We question the notion of progress with regard to the future. The passage of the probe in these areas demonstrated the dissolution of the modern myth and narrative that preaches the positive relationship between progress and social well-being. We passed and observed a large number of railway ruins. They were surprisingly recent. We were traveling through modern ruins. By examining the patterns of technological dependence, we witnessed two poles of technology's social experience, utility and waste. SEFT-1 has generated a series of powerful ripples in the society which have reactivated the discussion about these issues and has served as a catalyst for other projects, participating from the stance of art as a tangible social transformer. At least, Can we sit down? at least that's what we like to believe. And, uh, and we have had uh, a lot of experiences in which... I, I want to change images. Ah, uh, because no, okay. the cable is not too okay. And in which um, we, we could really uh, prove to, to ourselves and encourage to keep doing this project. Um, experiences in which um, in some places, uh, started to talk about reactivating some of the railway lines, and and after some years, you, you start seeing that uh, now the official government is talking about putting trains again. I'm not telling that it was because of us, but but um, it, it's, it's, for us, it's a beautiful experience because we're we're looking, that, we're seeing that uh, and witnessing that this is happening. In that sense, um, we're really satisfied with, with the project. Um, we also did some travelings in Ecuador. We were invited to to do the project there, and we questioned: Do we have to go? Really? I mean, is there a purpose? Is there a, um, a reason um, for the set to go there? And then we discovered that the answer was yes, um, because we wanted to see if whether everything that had happened in Mexico as um, as a systematic uh, way of uh, implanting modernity and then uh, the process from until its ruin, uh, it was the same all over Latin America or it was just an, an encapsulated uh, phenomenon. So it was very important that travel uh, to Ecuador since we, we could say yes with slightly differences but the process of that phenomenon is the same, was the same, and still it's pretty really much the same. Um, this was the kind of, um, the way we found uh, in Mexico, all around uh, the rest, the remains of, uh, of the railways. Um, we still have the fright, as you saw in the video, but in, in some, we did some travels by train, um, the last ones, to say. So that tracks remains as a constant question. What happened with this? Do you remember that it was um, great to travel? Do, do you remember how it was connected the country in this way? How cheap it was to get from one side to the other 3,000 kilometers away um, since it's a, a huge country. So um, that was the starting point of the project for real. What is happening now in those abandoned spaces? So um, that's how in 2006 we, we started developing this 
this tool, research tool, while we were working already on arts and we were working in technology as well and we wanted to cross that with a very personal and political position and, and question. Yeah, um, what triggered everything was the loss of the railways, as Ivan was saying, and going um, before to the idea of the railway, because we, we experienced that as a loss, as a loss of, of having a cheap transportation, as a, uh, a loss for the country and the way economics work in the countryside as well. But that was uh, as well the, like the failure of a promise, a promise that was like started much uh, before this idea of the train as a, as a, the way of solving hunger, of the progress of this idea that will bring good for everyone. And this cartoon that was the train going from London to the sun. Uh, was the endless possibility of this technology uh, that would take us anywhere we, 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 we want. And that same promise came in Mexico too. This, this uh, was a project for crossing uh, boats from the Atlantic to the Pacific, pulled by trains. So in that series of um, promises and, and like, uh, how do you say, like, um, utop utopia was painted this. And now what we're doing here in London with the Arts Catalyst is uh, it's a, the, the next step of, of this search and this research on the project, which is what happened to those places. And what we did with the project and the explorations was to go to all these places and see what are now. This painting was very famous, was iconic of the province of Mexico, was painted by Jose Maria Velasco, was part of the uh, World Fair, no, what was the World mm -hmm. Exhibition, like, <coughs> Exhibition Universal of mm -hmm. Paris. And so we went to the same place and we made uh, an overlapping of time and space in the, in the same spot, but now in ruins. So we talk from all those places, but now in ruins. And we have been working on the idea of, of ruins uh, all across the country and Latin America, as Ivan was saying, in Ecuador we did too. Uh, See? So I just wanted to add that the, as I was telling you about the, the importance of going to Ecuador. We also posed the question in the importance to coming to Britain with the project uh, when, when we got the invitation last year from the Art Catalyst to go to the Anne Festival and then next year too in further Gallery. And, and we say yes, of course, we need to go um, to the place where it all came from, where it all started, at least in terms of, uh, of, of, of railroad. And, and of modern projects, because um, what I found very interesting is that uh, even though we started with the train and we, we thought of the train in a nostalgic way, at the end the, the kind of questions we're posing to ourselves, it has nothing to do with the train, but the train only as a mean to um, perform all, all this uh, develop and extraction plan and, and, and and colonization plan. So um, for, us, for us, the questions have, have been growing um, wider. <coughs> um, should I, can I add something? Yes, um, in the discussion we had um, when this exhibition was shown in the Anne Festival in Liverpool um, on the uh, future of transport, um, it became very clear that there is a lot of resonance from this project to um, this whole issue in this country of um, the, the, the uh, effects of the rail privatization. And so that, in a sense, could be seen through that, that, that lens. And, 
and particularly as we had a case where there was a um, you know a, a public ownership of the, uh, of the East Coast Line, which now is going back into private hands. This became very 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 resonant in this country. And although we do still have railways here, we have railways in such a situation that I think the lessons we can learn from from the Mexican situation uh, are, are very pertinent. But um, I just wanted to ask you a little bit. Some of you may have seen um, the Guardian article by um, Jonathan Jones um, the, um, last week, um, which was specifically on the subject of ruins and, um, and, and also provoked by the exhibition Ruin Lust, which was at um, Tate Britain. Um, how do you feel about this? You call your exhibition Modern Ruins, um, and you use the scale, one, two, two, oh. Do you think, to some extent, and I'll be a little provocative here, that we are, to some extent, um, you know, that, that we're obsessing about the notion of ruins, rather than um, thinking about the ways in which we can transform our, our future? I mean, it, it's interesting that we seem to be in the state of looking back or, or um, fetishizing these ruins a bit. So do you think you could comment a little bit about the, the aspect of ruins in your work? Ruins were like the constant in every place we went on the project because the project was based on exploring abandoned tracks and most of them are ruins and we saw the ruined state um, we started to see it first as look, look this, this bridge or this tunnel it was built 150 years ago and we were surprised about that but then we really realized that that was very recently and that those ruins were like completely modern and not like an Aztec or Mayan pyramid or uh, Egyptian or whatever so it, it got really surprising how these ruins were new, were new ruins. So we started to to go uh, deeper on that, and we've been thinking as well and talking about the um, the condition of ruin being prior to even the construction of, of the of the buildings in terms of obsolescence or in terms of having a precise time of living that it's. Uh, has the their, their life it's um, how do you say like you know that it's going to fail even before you build it and for example in the case of uh, Hitler and the Third Reich that they had this law of ruins where they build big because they say that um, the monuments are the way that big civilizations are remembered. So they build all, the, all, all these spaces considering their ruined state. They build them with stone and with materials that will last for when they're gone, the monuments will stay and they will talk about the greatness of that civilization. So they established that as a law. And so they were uh, sketching the ruins before they were building them. So, I don't know, I think it's a, a, a topic of big uh, discussion. And, uh, I mean, the use of ruins, or, or the meaning of ruins, it's something that I don't know, it may be something that we need as a humanity to remember us the, the, the fugacity of our passage. Or... I won't deny that I, I do feel uh, fetish about ruins when I'm there, I love them. But uh, I don't think that the, 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 the use of the ruins in, in the project is fetishized um, by themselves. For me, the represent really, as Andres was saying, um, they are the manifestation of a, of a political issue that we don't like. Um, the misuse of, 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 uh, of the public resources, the common resources, in something that shouldn't be a ruin. 
Yeah. So um, that's that's what what we why we are obsessed with this because we we hear that mm. there is okay. yeah. there's no reason for them to be abandoned yet. Uh, I have another question, which is about um, the set as a tool. Um, I sort of call it an object. But, no, no, no. I was but, adding. Yeah, yeah. But, no, but as a tool, for me, it's interesting because we've been talking about hybrids tonight, and in a sense, I find the set is like a hybrid object because, as a vehicle, it's nothing without the people that are surrounding it. So the set is nothing without you guys who are driving it around the country, and it's also nothing without the responses of the people who see it. So in fun, funny sense, I would like to suggest that it's a hybrid object in that way. All it is basically is a truck that's looking quite impressive and runs on road and roads. It's actually not much, although I know you built it and with great difficulty, but Essentially, you know, there's nothing very radical about the fact that it's this thing that can run the road and roads. But yet, the the uniqueness is caused by the personality, in a sense, of you and Andres, and also the personalities of all the people who interact with it, including those people at the station called Esperanza, and and that whole thing. So, in a funny sense, it it does almost have the nature of a shamanic object. In my view. Would, would, would you agree with that? I agree that um, we are cyborgs with it, mm. uh, definitely. Um, and I also agree that it's a, a very um, useful tool in that sense. That mm. Once we, have, we, were, we were worried about it was too paraphernalic, mm. but it, it, it turned to be the other way around mm. because it, it opened at and really. Uh, close to the stories, uh, to intimate stories uh, mm. from us and from the people and uh, very tight mm. mm. Sometimes when we were traveling, we forgot when we were in a spacecraft. You know, we were, we were like so used to it and it was an extension of our thoughts and our research and our way of transportation. But suddenly uh, someone was staring at us and pointing and what are they looking at? And we realized that we were traveling on the, on the set. So that attachment and that uh, cyborg, as Ivan was saying, really happened. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the interior of the set, I mean, the functionality, presumably all these rather retro dials actually do, do things, is that right? Yeah, well, 90% of it of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh right, is that the one that wasn't working when the set caught fire in the day? Yeah. <laughs> Rob came with us on a small journey in New Mexico and we got fired on the dashboard. And that, that's how he knew that it was for real, that it was, <laughs> it was not just a, a fake experience of travel. The other 10% uh, of the buttons there, we, we couldn't afford to make them happen. <laughs> 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 But, but it also does have an extension on, on the internet itself. I mean, you, you can track the journey of the set on the website, is that right? Yeah, yeah and that, that's one of the main uh, distance canals communication mm -hmm. to, the, to the virtual uh, mm -hmm. net in which people all over were following that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's when the piece happened, mm -hmm. the, the one year of expedition and we were really uh, we just knew the point A and point B and we didn't know what was in between so we were like really exploring and every day we posted our, our images and videos and texts and people could see in, in the map where we were and send comments so it felt like really a, it was a real expedition we had no previous scouting or anything so we could feel that every discovery was deep for us. And we were, when we started traveling in Mexico, it was in 2010, and it was in the middle of the, the, the war against organized crime. So it was very mediatized, the thing. So we, we were very scared of going into abandoned places, 
in the market. Yeah, um, one of the films that you uh, showed in the exhibition, which I saw in Albuquerque, this was actually part of ICEA, if anybody was in, in, in the, that ICEA uh, um, in Albuquerque, that was the two ICEAs ago. Um, one of the ones that impressed me was where you were able to only operate the set within a shopping mall. And the reason was that it was too dangerous to go anywhere else apart from that shopping so yeah, and then you kind of conflated it a little bit with the, uh, the Carl Sagan soundtrack, um, uh, which kind of reflected um, the notion of extraterrestrial in, in, in a way. Can you tell us a little bit about the story behind that, um, that, 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 that piece? Yeah, um, very, we don't have the video, right? Well, do no, you? don't worry. Maybe it is too long, in fact. But the, 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 quickly the story was that we came to this town and the, the railway museum was taken by the organized crime, so we couldn't exit it there. And we had to do it in a, in a shopping mall. And most of the museums of the city were hiring small places in the shopping mall because in order to continue their cultural life. So such was the, such, such was the situation of the city. So we were very struggling on taking and being there um, to show the set and we didn't want it at the beginning and finally we accepted and, and we understood that uh, it was talking about the situation and we did this video in which the set was traveling uh, through the, the stores with all the, the big trains, how to say that? Mm -hmm. the yeah. 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 And, uh, and in the background, you could see the soundtrack of Carl Sagan, which was saying in the vastness of the, of the universe, there must be some other civilizations far older and far wiser than ours. Mm -hmm. So you're there mm -hmm. in this kind of cosmic mm -hmm. particular space. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was fun to write at the end of the world. Mm -hmm. So um, I've got one more question, I suppose, because we've been working together on developing the new project, which we have invitations for, which I'll hand out afterwards, uh, opening on Friday. And one of the things um, they're doing, which um, we want to visit today, is their response to trying to bring the set concept to this small island, which is quite heavily populated with railways, was to engage with this notion of the, the fact that there's quite a wide community of people involved in um, hobbyists, involved in the miniaturization of railways, and to create miniaturized worlds. I'm talking about model railway enthusiasts. So, in a sense, your response to this culture, which was in, in a way abundant with railways compared to Mexico, was to to look at these people who were uh, like making their own worlds, their own railway worlds in, 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 their, in, in their upstairs rooms, in their, in their backyards. Can you explain a little bit why you came to that conclusion that this was an area you wanted to engage with? You want to go there? Yeah, well, <coughs> that's an interpretation I haven't thought about. <laughs> But um, the, the main reason oh, we, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got to that idea that what we are doing now here um, is basically um, the first railway in Mexico was built by British engineers, companies and engineers. The Mexican government uh, partnered with uh, British capital and British uh, engineers to build the first railways there. So, which now are in ruins. No? As you can see, this, this one, which is part of the first line, is the Wimmer Bridge, and this is the Metlac Bridge. And those were pieces of engineer iconic to, to the progress in Mexico. And what we're doing now is to commission to British rail model constructors the building of this particular bridge in scale, in 220 scale. So basically we are um, dissecting the landscape and the bridge and engineering of that spot to recreate it 
we brought almost 3,000 trees, scale trees from Mexico, built there, and we are working with this uh, guy, Neville Reed, uh, to build a bridge and to landscape all that. So it's a way of going, uh, creating another loop, another another layer in this image and the story of this image. And somehow to do a actualization of, of, of what happened, let's say, um, it, is, it is not intended to be a um, reclam, a complaint, a, a complaint, a claim. It is not intended to be a claim, but rather to bring the result of uh, our research there and, and, and some of the conclusions we have got back to here, where that bridge came up. And I'm, I'm saying literally, the beams and the metal was built here. We have the names of the factories and so on. So um, it, is a, it, it is for us a beautiful return. Uh, it is a metaphor and it, is, and it is also a way in which we want to share with, with the British um, people the questions that um, appear to us. Because one, one other question is that uh, the idea of railway and everything uh, was born here and was uh, exported to Mexico where when we started the ex expedition the idea of railway was abandoned the, the idea was more abandoned than the infrastructure and that doesn't uh, that never happened here where, where there's this big, big community of people obsessed with railway train spotters uh, whatever so we, we are trying to work something in between those two worlds, like when we bring the product here.